Hey guys, Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations. Welcome back to the shop. You know, the other day, if you watched my bandsaw video on how to cut off multiple pieces, you saw me saw up a bunch of these little guys right here. Now, when I said I had a lot to do, I meant not just dozens, hundreds. And when it comes to a job like that, you have to think smart if you want to make any money on it or not lose your mind and get bored while you're doing it. So you have to weigh out the variables of, is it quicker to just attack it and get it done and move it through the shop? Or should I build a fixture and do it in a fraction of the time it would have taken? You know, what's the total time spent on the job both ways? Well, the both ways mentality is, is it coming back? Because if you struggle through it the first time just to get it out and it comes back, well, then you've got to struggle through it a second time as well. And I call that the next time scenario. If you're working for someone, it's like, oh, no, I quoted this at this much time. you got to get it out the door. No time to make the fixture. But next time around, there's going to be no time to make the fixture either. So for this time around, I decided, you know, I'm going to invest some time and I'm going to make some tooling for it. And if this uh, little piece looks like it should be a lathe job, it absolutely should be a lathe job. This is something ideally suited for a CNC lathe, except for the fact that some of these parts have multiple holes in the end and they're not concentric. So when you start getting into that type of component, you need a very special CNC lathe with what's called live tooling so that you can put a bolt pattern or a non-concentric hole in the end of the part. So let me show you how I did this one and we'll talk a little bit more about the fixture. This is the tooling that I built for it. It is a 28 station aluminum fixture. Banks off the left side. And this single little counter bore in the center is the fixture home position. Let me shake up the world for you here a little bit. Now when I set this fixture back in the machine, all I need to do is indicate that center hole and I'm off and running. So long as the machine knows where that center hole is, the program contains the information for all 28 pockets. Now if you're looking at it and going, well, you know, that's a nice fixture and all, but it's going to take you 19 minutes to load and unload. Well, you know what? That's why you build two. And here's the other one right here, sitting in the ready. They are exactly the same, and the beauty of that is while one's running, the other one can be on the bench uh, making you know, the changeover to the next parts. And if you have any time in between loads, well, I mean, by all means, go run another machine or do something else to earn money while your uh, CNC is running unattended. One of the things that you do need to consider if you make multiple fixtures is that you make the fixtures at the same time and they always go back in the machine the same way. I'm going to push the go button here. We're going to take a look at how this works and I'm going to uh, unlock the camera and hand hold that for that operation and let's just take a look. This particular operation is going to deck the parts off, fly cut the parts, chamfer all the edges, drill and tap a hole in each one of these things and hopefully everything goes as planned. I'm going to keep the door closed initially for this guy right here. This is not something that you want throwing chips at you or to be anywhere close to, uh, nor the fly cutter, but let's see what happens. Get behind the glass for this one. about 10 pound worth of material on the end it's going to change direction for the back side and it's going to throw the chips at me so now is when I should close the door fly cutter coming up for the finished length and the cosmetics this is going to put a real nice finish on the end of these We do have some burrs on the edges, so the next tool is going to take care of that, times 28 pieces.
Okay guys, real time, eight minutes. And we gotta drill and tap every one of those and this is where it gets wet. Real time, about a minute and a half. Now it's time to drill 28 holes, one inch deep. Here we go. Get the idea, we're gonna come back when the tap is in and uh, give you a total program time. See how it works out. Guys, I thought it would be a good idea to mention that this particular drilling operation on this uh, brass job right here, since the diameter of the drill is only about 150 and we're going over an inch deep with it, it's a really good idea to retract the drill completely out of the hole so that any chips that may bind up in the flutes of the drill can spin off and the drill can get re-lubricated and the hole can get flushed out. This is called a deep hole drilling operation and it's one of several canned drilling operations that are in the controller here on the doll. You have peck, you have spot, you have deep hole, uh, countersink, counterbore, and this particular operation I thought because of the depth of the hole that a deep hole would be good. You can set how far it goes per plunge, uh, what the feed rate is, what the total depth is, RPM. It's a very controllable feature based on the material. So what works for brass may not work for stainless or aluminum. Uh, so you know, pick it up and uh, find out. So deep hole drilling, this is how we're doing it. And it's working out very well. A couple more pieces to go. We'll get the tap in there and show you how that's working. Tapping operation is about to initiate. And the one thing you do not want in a drilled hole when a rigid tap comes down is chips. This is a 1024 high spiral tap, 350 RPM. Guys, 28 pieces, 21 minutes, 51 seconds. So let's do a little bit of math here for a second. 21 times 60. Oops. 21 times 60, that works better. Divided by 28. All right. Faced, chamfered, center drilled, drilled, and tapped, 28 pieces. 21 minutes 51 seconds which is good because you can go do something else for that 21 minutes that's 45 seconds a piece and one of the beauties of doing this in a mill and not in a lathe these pieces are very cosmetic and the customer does not want dents in them so in a lathe if you part it off and it flies around the inside of the machine chances are it's going to dent leave a little booger on the edge and that's not a good thing so we got a nice rack of clean pieces it's going to be about a two minute door open time, which is not bad for a 22 minute cycle time. I'm okay with that. And that is strictly just blowing all the chips out of the way. So hope you uh, like what you saw. And it was about time I threw some real production on the screen for you. That's it. Joe Pye Advanced Innovations, Austin, Texas. I'm out.